I got a box from my buddy David Johns of Twice Diecast, who I'm sure you all know, and if you don't, you should, and you should check out his uh, channel. Um, just arrived this week, and uh, I'm going to do a live unboxing here. So pretty big box. Uh, there's a few of his. Um, customs that he sent me in the background uh, we can take a look at those later on if uh, somebody's interested let's cut this open um, there, I know there's a another custom in here so I'm very curious on what that's going to be Rudy Moons Goedenavond. Uh, Quirky Aurel, you are correct. Uh, that is the correct word you used. David, thank you so much for this box. I could not read what you uh, wrote there, so I'm just going to tap the screen to look at it again. Oh, uh, you don't need to thank me. Uh, I uh, need to thank you, uh, my friend. Um, and I'm sure everyone will enjoy this. All right, so there's a, a huge letter that comes with it. So let's see. Okay. Okay, cool. There's a matchbox mainline of a police car from his hometown. In Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay, cool. I didn't know you were from there, David. Sentimental gift. Cool. Um, okay. Yeah, that's I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, this will be a surprise for the viewers. Uh, oh, nice. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Andre, hi. Welcome. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. Hmm. Okay. So I will show that uh, when uh, uh, time comes. So let's see. Ooh, this is an older style matchbox packaging from like, I don't know, more than 10 years ago. Andre, you're a small YouTuber with 211 subscribers. Well, maybe you will get some more if people uh, see, watch this video and uh, read the live chat and uh, go over to your uh, channel. Okay, let's see. What is this? Ooh, look at that. So that is the uh, uh, police vehicle that he was talking about. It's the Dodge Charger Police in the uh, Shreveport livery. Oh, that's awesome. Definitely do, do not have this, and I think this might be a USA exclusive. 2010, so yeah, definitely more than 10 years ago. Look at that, a whole uh, description of uh, the police department. Sweet. That is awesome. So, uh, this is the version without the um, light bar and the push bar. I think there's a version with the light bar and a push bar on it. Awesome, uh, David. So uh, he says he could not believe uh, Matchbox did this and uh, it's an actual uh, accurate delivery. Wow. Well, I'm definitely going to open this up. I might keep the card though. Because uh, it's very, uh, I've never seen so much written on the back of a, of a card like this. Yeah, that's kind of special. So here we've got the, um, well, it doesn't actually say, oh, there it is, Dodge Charger. Small print, cool uh, steelies on there. Or are those not steelies? Well, they're not really steelies, are they? More like five spokes. And uh, let's see, Krager style wheels. Yeah, we got the uh, red, white, and blue. Got the tail lights done. 
<laughs> Crooked Garage 1999 warns me about the cardboard police. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, now I have to look inside and see if there's a donuts under seats or something like that. Let me see. It's very dark windows. Oh, we don't have a computer. See, that's why I uh, mentioned there's a separate police version. This was not uh, designated as a police vehicle. So it doesn't have the computer nor the, uh, um, the handcuffs, the box of donuts or the uh, CB apparatus in there. So it's kind of a civilian car and a police deco. That's cool. Got the dual exhaust there. Sweet. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that, David. That's already a great start of this video. Uh-oh. So he mentioned uh, he put in a auto world in there and I can see it's uh, um, a Dodge based on a Japanese vehicle kind of stuck on something at some uh, tape in there yeah I have uh, figured uh, Aurel you saw my comments uh, uh, on something on the previous video cool so we got the 1986 Dodge Conquest TSI it does not say how many were made new casting Usually it says uh, the number here. This is the first release of our all new Dodge Conquest TSI casting. The Conquest was sold under the Plymouth Dodge and Chrysler brands from 1984 to 1989. Uh, Andre, I know Dodge is made in USA, but uh, it's based on a, a Japanese car. This is uh, 2022 release four. Yeah, that's right, David. This uh, seems like a uh, a quirky kind of car. Quirky Garage 999. Definitely uh, up his alley, I think. Nice chrome rims. Well, let's uh, let's open it up and uh, see what it looks like. Yeah, this. October 12, 2022 date on there. Uh, Andre, you live in the UK and Auto World is expensive there. Well, Auto World is expensive here too. They are around uh, 10 uh, euro. So uh, probably eight or nine pounds for you. It says Conquer on the license plate. It's got the chrome rims. Got the opening uh, hood. I don't live in the USA, Andre. I uh, live in Europe. I live across the pond from you. Very close. Let's see if I can uh, open this up. Uh, sometimes these are. Very tricky to open. Uh, they shouldn't do opening parts for me. I could do without, but you know, it's part of what they do. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work, but that's okay. Look, got that uh, radiator there. Or is that an intercooler? I don't know if this vehicle had a turbo or not. But if it uh, did have a turbo, then that, that's probably an intercooler. Very nicely detailed. Sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much, David. All right. All right. Okay. Austin Martin DB6. So he put in a um, an advert for an Austin Martin DB6. Mail pouch tobacco, treat yourself to the best. Nice. I don't know where this uh, 
Car and Driver. Okay, July 1966. Oh, wow. That's uh, not really an advert, but more of a uh, review of the vehicle back then. Uh, that's awesome. Hard riding, hard steering, reminder of the good old days. For Viral, Viral purists with an Edwardian turn of mind. <laughs> that's some uh, good writing right there. Okay, so this is so well wrapped up. David always d does a great job at packaging. This box was wrapped in, in another um, kind of a paper. I already cut that off to save some time because I know he um, he spends a lot of time packaging stuff. Just says Aston Martin DB6 on the box. Interesting. And the vehicle inside is wrapped up. So it does not... Uh, come loose and start uh, banging inside the box I guess oh but what the heck that box actually says twice die cast really you got your own uh, die cast manufacturing uh, business going on David wow so uh, this must be the custom he was talking about. All right, so I'm going to be very careful. Okay, Aurel is guessing it's a uh, Corgi Junior's casting. I wouldn't know. All right, that's uh. <laughs> no manufacturing this is the custom including the box packaging well that's very cool David that is uh, unbelievable you always put some so much work in the uh, in the packaging too it's uh, it's insane see got the background with the uh, the um, um, article part of the article in the back there okay so apparently Aurel was right who is David Andre asks David Johns is uh, the owner of twice diecast a uh, very famous YouTube YouTube channel um, uh, formerly known as uh, the worst YouTube channel ever but uh, uh, twice diecast is uh, definitely a uh, better name Ooh, look at that Wow this looks fantastic I'm going to put it on the base so you can uh, look at it in awe. Look at that. Look at that. It's got the uh, English license plate on there. Sweet. I don't know if the license plate is based on a real existing vehicle. Well, James Bond uh, had the DB5. I don't think he had a uh, DB6, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Look at that. That is awesome. What a nice color. Beautiful. Let's see if we can uh, shed some light on the interior. The box is not working against me. Kind of hard to show. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Okay, so according to Corkypedia, the Corgi is the only one that ever did the Aston Martin DB6. So this seems to be metal on metal. That is nice. And uh, he's put some... Uh, possibly green light wheels on there but they suit so well because it got the wire wheels just like the one in the picture that is awesome city of diecast vehicles hello welcome wow look at that well david you've outdone yourself again this is a uh, absolutely magnificent and here it is in its uh in its box Wow, look at that. What a beauty. 
I went to a uh, old timer show um, just recently, and that I saw two uh, DB4s, I believe, but I did not see a DB6. That's awesome. What a beauty. Thank you so much, David. That's a work of art, for sure. Then he bought me a few five packs that he um, he showed in a, a video when he visited a store somewhere in the US. Yeah, obviously, uh, Wikipedia is talking about 164 scale. They have been uh, DB6s done by um, other diecast manufacturers in other scales. But in uh, 164, 3 inch, apparently, uh, Kogi was uh, the only one that did it. We got the DB5 from Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels diecast collector, welcome. Okay, David, you're back. You lost signal for a moment. Yeah, that's okay. Let's um, take this stuff out and get rid of the box. That way we have some more room to work with. There you go. Look at these. Oh, I got two of the same ones. Ha! That's awesome. I didn't even realize that. Okay. So, this one's a bit more beat up. So, I'm going to open up this one. And I can uh, keep this one carded. I don't think there's any wheel variations in there. No, they're not. Um, so, he asked me which ones I wanted. And... Uh, uh, this is all good stuff in here, a lot of uh, metal bases and a lot of stuff I like. So um, he picked this one up for me, Showbiz one, from copyright 1998, so possibly 1999 release. So let's cut this open. So it's got this little uh, top piece that folds over, kind of like a, a book. Let's start at the bottom here, we got the Cobra, Hot Wheels, doesn't actually mention Cobra. Metal on Metal, Celebrity. And flamage, celebrity, Tour de Milan, really, Milan is a, a city in uh, Italy, Milano, opening hood with a metal engine in there, see that's why I uh, really wanted this five pack, and uh, we get a disc for a steering wheel, uh, that's good enough, Sweet. Next up we got a Ferrari. And it doesn't say which one. And I'm not sure which one it is. It's got a chrome grill piece that is uh, part of this side exhaust piece also. Got some lens headlights, part of the window piece, cool. Got the Scuderia logo on the sides and on the front, which is different than the uh, road cars logo, obviously. Also got the disc for steering wheel. 
I don't think I have this casting, so I'm really pleased with this. This is awesome. This one's got a plastic base. I'm going to have to look up which one this is really. Okay, cool, quirky. Yeah, really pleased with this. Always nice to have a Ferrari casting that you did not have before. Thunderbird, I think this is. What does it say there? 19, no, 63, yeah, 1963 T-Bird. It says on the metal base, very shiny. Got the wire wheels. Okay, fine, David, you have bad signal. Thank you so much for these. I'm very pleased with them and uh, yeah. We'll catch up later. 250 TR for Testa Rossa. Okay, thank you. Aurel. This is the Ferrari 250 TR Testa Rossa. Okay, it's got uh, something cinematography like on the hood. Daniel Matthewson. Yes, uh, the, um, the thumbnail vehicle sorry about the uh, alarm here as in as an opal cadet custom that uh, david did for me you can take a look at that at the end of the video if you want white interior hot wheels reels cool nice gold color too and we got the limousine <laughs> that's funny hot wheels die gas collector <laughs> Chrome plastic base, Holly Weird. <laughs> Does that really say Holly Weird? Or am I just imagining that? That's cool. Got the blue interior. Yeah, cool one. And then we got possibly a caddy. Yeah, 1935 Cadillac. So got the wire wheels. Aldo's Tuxedo Center. Aldo's Tuxedo Center. That's a very nice color. Kind of a dark blue, almost purple. At the metal base, well, at least the centerpiece. And then the plastic uh, running boards and fenders. Spare wheels. The, um, the grill seems to be a separate chrome piece together with the headlights. Wow, oh, that's a really nice version. I love these old uh, 30s and 40s cars. Too bad Hot Wheels doesn't do those anymore. So we got a spare one here. I was not expecting uh, David to get me two of these. And then he also found this at Ross which seems to be a very good source in the US for a uh, cheap die-cast. Um, I think they had those uh, container, Hot Wheels, um, main, uh, premium cars, you know, car culture in a container. And uh, yeah, for very cheap. Over here you pay 60 uh, euro for one of those uh, containers, Hot Wheels containers, with uh, some car, car culture cars in there. It's only nine euro ninety nine for a uh, four pack of these working rigs. Over here in Europe, uh, that would be one of these vehicles, nine euro ninety nine. So it would be uh, forty euro for four. So, so even the normal price would be half of uh, almost half of what we would have to pay here. And this is what is in here. Uh, is this old? This has a 2021 copyright, so uh, 2022 release probably. So a, a, a release from last year, I assume. It's taped up. Which is a good thing. 
unlike, unlike mage red that hardly ever tapes up anything and then that makes you wonder if something has been taken out or swapped out so here we got the Ranek crane so Ranek is actually the word crane with the the C behind the word instead of in front of it nice heavy piece this is a re-release of a uh, original release somewhere in 2009 or 2010 so this goes up this goes up might originally have ha has have had a white boom i'm not sure and then this swivels I don't know what this hole is for. Oh yeah, that's for the, uh, the lifting cylinder. And then there's a, a thingy in the front here to, for the hook. Here we got, uh, what's this, the scraper. Let me see, of oh, the road grader. So this swivels. I think that's the only moving part on here. Again, nice weight to it, lots of details. Plastic cabin. Then we got the cement mixer. Let's see, what does that say? Cement King HD. I think I have a cement mixer, uh, which is a Duff from back in the day. So this is a newer release. Should be should have a higher number. Yes, fifty-two. Andre, thank you for asking the people to give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. So this swivels left and right. This also turns. Got these uh, cyclist protection bars. So it's a C COE cab over engine, generic cab, Euro style. King concrete. Thank you, Aurel. Cool. So, and then we got the one I think is the nicest one of all of them, the uh, GM attenuator truck. So licensed vehicle, GMC on the grill. Does it say MBX country? Road works. Cool. Lane closed ahead. MBX country. So I think this uh, flips down. Yeah, like that. You can use it as a, uh, a crash barrier if uh, vehicles crash into the back of it. 60 pounds for one truck. What? That seems awfully expensive. And then here we got the arrow, and I think you can take this out somehow. Or you can just flip it over. Oh yeah, I think so. No, well, that way it's not in function. But I think you can just take it out and switch it to the other side. For the um, people that drive on the um, other side of the road. Cool. Awesome. 
So anyone want to see the other customs that uh, David has done for me in the past? I'm not breaking anything, Aurel. My M5 E60 V10, welcome. Yes, you're late, but that's okay. I was about to show um, some of uh, the previous customs that David did for me. So here's the Opel Cadet. With the uh, nice uh, advertising on there. Andre is wondering if I have a Fuego. Hmm. Um, definitely not a, a recent uh, one, but um, I might have an older one somewhere in the childhood collection. Yeah, I think I do. So for those of you who have not seen this uh, custom, so this is based on the Matchbox Opel Cadet Coupe. Very nice wheels on it. What country has the 60 pound wheel, work, wheel working rigs? Well, I don't know. Um, you should ask um, City of Diecast Vehicles. Very nicely done. Even the interior and everything. That's a very nice custom. And you see the packaging is always on point with David. He just puts so much work in it. Insane. So here's the one from today. Hood Garage diecast. Yeah, I agree. That's a really nice cadet. Oh, I put on the uh, the lid wrong because you can't see the, the twice diecast emblem. See, there you go. Why is diecast emblem on this uh, bespoke case? Well, I definitely don't have the uh, the Norev Mini Jet Fuego, Andre. That is for sure. Okay, sorry for the American flag falling down, but it does not have any support anymore. Here's a uh, Ford Transit fan he did with uh, my uh, channel name and a logo on there. So uh, if you were one wondering where I'm from in Europe, it says it right there. Very cool. And then probably uh, my favorite up until now, based on a real existing vehicle with this existing license plate SOS 901. Um, this uh, is a, there. This was a Porsche 911 Targa. High hood garage diecast used by the Belgian police, and he. Uh, he uh, made a custom version of it. He used the former Corgi casting that had the spoiler on the back, cut off the spoiler and um, made it look like the real one. <laughs> Quirky, stop it. <laughs> uh, and he put a, a little light on top of there. So, those of you who have uh, seen this before will already know the story, but the reason why the Belgian police chose the Targa is because there was always two policemen in there, and the passenger policeman um, would stand up on the seat and give directions to uh, the, the traffic. Uh, and that's why they chose the, uh, the Targa version. Uh, it's kind of a funny story, I think. Anyway, he did a, a smashing job. <laughs> all right, so that's uh, that's all the stuff I got from him. Again, thank you so much, David. You really put a lot of work in it. 
one more time as you always do it's just great to have a, a friend like that let's put in the dodge in there too and what I'm missing here oh the dodge the other dodge so there's two dodges yeah that's true uh, Andre the Dutch police also used the um, Porsche 911 Targa they uh, there were two or a few um, Porsche 911s that had did not have the Targa roof they were just a closed version for like uh, organ transport so uh, uh, that's what uh, they used those for uh, yeah so thank you all very much for watching enjoy the rest of your weekend uh, check out twice diecast on youtube if you haven't already um, he does uh, some great stuff on there all diecast related uh, thanks for those of you who participated in the live chat and see you next time bye bye